Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. This is an eight-year-old i5 6th gen PC. It must be hopelessly obsolete, right? Not so fast. Today's video might surprise you. While four cores and four threads from 2015, that was a hot minute ago, might seem old by today's standards, not every game needs an i9 or an RTX 4090 to play well. Today, I'm gonna show you 22 different games tested using a $200 RX 6600 installed on this PC and show you just how far you can push this old PC with a modest graphics card upgrade. Now, without further ado, please grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price, get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. First, if you just want to see some benchmarks, timestamps will be in the timeline and in the video description below. Feel free to jump around if you don't care to hear the history behind this PC and all of its upgrades. This is a gaming PC that I built in 2015 for my daughter, who was seven years old at the time. She used it for about five years before it was replaced by something newer, one of the benefits of having a tech dad. This is powered by an Intel i5 6500 CPU, a four core, four thread Skylake chip that runs at 3.3 gigahertz out of the box on an all core turbo. It cost about $30 more at the time versus the i5 6400, which far more of you own, that ran at 2.7 gigahertz all-core turbo. In my opinion, that was $30, very well spent. Our CPU is installed on an ASUS H170 Plus D3 motherboard, the D3 standing for DDR3, and the H170 meaning it has no overclocking support. Yes, Intel did provide support for both DDR3 and DDR4 for 6th and 7th gen CPUs, just like they provide DDR4 and DDR5 support for 12th and 13th gen CPUs. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 installed, a pair of SSDs for the boot and game drives, a 750 watt 80 plus gold Cooler Master power supply, all installed in a lovely Cooler Master Masterbox 5 case. The video card has been upgraded several times over the years. To be honest, I can't remember what I originally had here in 2015. There's no video of it because building this predated creating the YouTube channel, which was in 2016. However, I do know that this had an RX 588 gigabyte card when my daughter upgraded from this to the Ryzen 7 1700X a few years after that launched as a hand-me-down when Zen Plus or Zen 2 launched because that RX 580 was then moved into her new 1700X. Again, the benefits of having a tech dad. Today, it has been upgraded to a 2021 GPU, the RDNA 2-based RX 6600, which is honestly a bit overkill for this CPU, but it does mean that we get to see the performance of the CPU rather than the GPU. The point of the video isn't to show max possible epic performance. After all, it's a budget build from 2015. Rather, the goal is to show a real-world PC built from 2015 using the sort of normal people parts that might well go into such a machine. DDR4 was very expensive in 2015. Using DDR3 at that time was a reasonable choice. After all, this was not built for the YouTube channel. I would remind you, this was my daughter's computer that was strictly built to give her something because she was currently having to share, and at seven years old, it was time. The benchmark footage that you're about to watch was recorded on a second PC using a capture card. This PC doesn't even know it was being recorded. MSI Afterburner was used for the on-screen numbers you'll see in the footage. We have a video on how to set that up if you're interested. All of the benchmarks today were run at 1080p at various levels of detail ranging from very low to super maximum. The on-screen text will indicate what the settings were for each game when they're shown on screen. Now with the history and details of this PC out of the way, let's get to some benchmarks, shall we? Our first game today is Apex Legends, a very popular esports game that has a surprising number of people still playing. In May of 2023, 115 million people played at least one match with a peak concurrent player count of 4.3 million gamers. 
You are currently watching 1080p low detail, a reasonable setting for this PC and one that provides exceptional performance. The frame time graph is fairly smooth and the average frame rate would look good on a 144Hz monitor. 1% lows are above 60, so this is absolutely playable. Next up, we have Battletech, one of my favorite mech games of the past decade. Unlike the Mech Warrior games, this is played turn based and top down. Because this is a turn based game, absolute frame rate is not critical, just something playable is needed. This is 1080p max detail, and we are averaging over 60 frames per second. Frankly, all this game really needs. The 1% low is poor, but that's from transitions and turn jumps more than anything else. Borderlands 3 is a much newer game with heavier graphics, however, it still does quite well. This is 1080p ultra detail, and our average frame rate holds just above 60. It's not ideal, there will be stutter in this game, it's at least, however, functional. We also tested it at very low detail to see if that made much of a difference. However, it did not. We averaged 84. It's not much faster because we are CPU bound here, not GPU. The 1% low did improve, so that's something to consider. Lowering detail settings isn't always about average frame rate. It definitely can help with 1% lows in some cases. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is next. This game really is CPU bottlenecked even at ultra detail. This is the built-in benchmark because we tested 22 games and doing live gameplay on Call of Duty properly takes four hours to do two detail settings on a single setup due to multiple matches required to find the baseline. Expect live gameplay in multiplayer to vary up and down from this with a 1% low that gets worse the bigger the map and the match. This game is pretty well optimized for a wide range of hardware, but it really does want more than four threads for a great experience. Fortnite is next, and instead of side by side, we're going to show you two battles at different detail settings. This is ultra detail, and as you can see, it runs terribly. Frame stutters, input lag, and a 1% low that will dip to single digits at times. This isn't a graphics card problem, it is a lack of CPU power to draw the detail of the world. This is low detail, and to be fair, it's not the same game mode, our bad, so it's not a one-to-one -one comparable. However, it should give you a general idea of what to expect. The performance difference is night and day better. It's not perfect, but that's not a reasonable expectation on this PC. Instead, what this does show is that if you want to play games like Fortnite, you absolutely can with some compromises. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is next, and thanks to the Vulcan API, which was added in a post-launch patch, this runs shockingly well on this old PC. I did a review of this game shortly after it launched on DirectX 11, and it ran like dirt on a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. So Ubisoft can optimize games. Go figure. The same can sadly not be said for the prior game in the Ghost Recon line, Wildlands. You are currently watching 1080p high detail, a lower detail setting than Breakpoint was at, yet the performance here is absolutely terrible. Not only can we not hold 60 frames per second, we're barely over 30. It functions, but it's so CPU overloaded as to make it really not worth playing. This is a 2016 game being played on a 2015 CPU. This is probably why Ubisoft has the reputation it does for absolutely terrible optimization. An i7 at 6700K would be way better here. The higher clock speed combined with hyper-threading would smooth out the frame rate. Allow me to point out that I was playing this game on my i7 4790K with far better results when this launched. The 4 gigahertz all-core turbo combined with 8 threads made it way better than the follow-up 6th gen i5. That's often been the case no matter what raw performance numbers might otherwise indicate. Grand Theft Auto V runs just fine on the i5-6500, as it should considering it first launched in 2013. My goodness, it's been a decade how time flies when you're having fun. Now in fairness, the PC version launched later in 2015 after Rockstar Games wisely took the time to optimize the PC version rather than rush a launch. I wonder if EA could take a page from that book. Nah, probably not. Instead, let us marvel at how nice GTA V looks while running on some very old hardware. 
Now, to be completely fair, this is the single player game, which hasn't changed much since it was originally launched. More than one viewer has commented that the multiplayer game has evolved over time and may not run this well. Heroes of the Storm is probably not a game you hear anyone talk about anymore. Major development ended in 2022 with ongoing support following the lines of StarCraft II. The game is eight years old, same age as the CPU, so naturally you'd expect it to run well and you won't be disappointed. This is here mostly because I like playing it. It has my favorite Blizzard characters in it. Diva is my main in Overwatch, so naturally she is here as well. Both the CPU and the GPU are rather underutilized here. A two core i3 would run this without complaint. Hitman 3 really has no business being here, having just launched in 2021 and being a new AAA game with some very nice graphics. This is max detail, and as you can see here, it is absolutely 100% non-functional. You couldn't play this if you tried. Or could you? This is medium detail, same location of the benchmark, and instead of a stuttery, useless mess, you get almost functional performance, with the pain of a 1% low that is half of the average. Still, this is impressive for a newer game on some old hardware. I don't actually recommend this, however. The game is too new and the hardware is too old. This is one game that I'd skip for this CPU. Overwatch 2 is next, and this runs really well on this CPU. It does use all of it. There's nothing left for live streaming or multitasking, but it's still pretty good at low detail. We did try running at high and epic detail to compare. Both were okay for casual play, but not for competitive as their 1% lows were terrible. This is 165 frames per second average with a 78 1% low, really nice for a four core, four thread CPU. This really is a standout example of how these older PCs are not finished just yet, so long as you don't care to play cyberpunk on them. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, or it should be if the game would load. The loading times were excessive, and it tried to start the benchmark before the whole world had loaded in. It's a good example of how a lack of CPU power matters in more ways than one. This is functional, you could play it this way, but let's look at low detail for something better. Once again, the CPU can't load the world in fast enough, however, the average frame rate has improved by quite a bit. The 1% low is still dreadful. Look at the CPU usage, it's tasked to capacity. Soul Survivor is a tower defense game that runs on a wide range of hardware. Not quite as good as Defense Grid in my opinion, it's a nice alternative in its own right and it is worth playing for fans of the tower defense genre. This is max detail and it's held back here in survivor mode by a lack of CPU clock speed and per core performance. Lower detail might help a bit, but what it really needs is more clock speed. This is another example of a game that doesn't get benchmarked or covered elsewhere and is a good example of how useful older PCs can be when Jedi Survivor isn't the end all be all of gaming. Spider-Man Remastered is a really beautiful game with details as far as the eye can see. Literally. Give this game an i9-13900K and an RTX 4090, crank it up to ultra ray tracing at 4K, and you are in for a treat. Here we're at 1080p high detail, no ray tracing of course, and no. Just no. This game absolutely needs more than four threads to function. Texture pop, stutter, input lag, and this is just swinging through the city. This would not be a good experience in any way, shape, or form. Like Hitman 3, give this game a very hard pass on hardware this old. Star Wars Battlefront 2 launched in 2017, a lovely game that once again shows how far EA lost the plot in their quest for loot crates. Still, a blast to play with many game modes and features. It has improved over the years with the addition of DirectX 12, which you see here which sadly runs worse than DirectX 11 for some reason. Thanks, EA. Here is DirectX 11, and while the frame rate isn't massively higher, it is smoother overall. To be fair, this is a completely different map, but we have enough time in this game to tell you that DirectX 11 is the better choice, or we think so anyway. 
you of course can do what you like. This is once again using 100% of the CPU. There is nothing left to give here. Normally I don't think much of i5K chips, but in this case, an overclocked 4.5 gigahertz i5-6600K would help. But then again, so would an overclocked i7-6700K with eight threads. Now this is an oldie but goodie. Star Wars Republic Commando was released on the Xbox in 2005. Yes, the OG Xbox. Of course this runs fine. It would run fine on a Pentium 4, the single core version. It actually only requires a 1 GHz Pentium 3 or a 1 GHz AMD Athlon chip, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a 64 megabyte 3D card. Yes, megabytes. I said it. So why in the world is this here? It's ridiculous, right? Because it's a good game, it's fun. Honestly, my son wanted an excuse to play it for the benchmarking. He's, this is his gameplay here. And once again, it's a reminder that there are approximately 18,000 billion games that you can run on older computers without buying i9 or RTX anything. StarCraft II is another game that should, in theory, run on a toaster. Maybe a really nice toaster. Launched in 2010, this game was designed to run on fairly low-end systems of the time. An i5-6500 should actually be overkill, right? Yet somehow it really isn't, even in the campaign. This is the final battle of the Zerg campaign, and while it runs fine, it is nothing special for hardware that is so far beyond the base requirements. Get into a multiplayer match with a lot of units, and this actually would be pretty dreadful much faster clock speeds and a better IPC would help here. Honestly, the i3-12100F would be a really nice CPU for this game. The Division 2 came out in 2019. It is a AAA game from Ubisoft. Clearly it has no chance on a 2015 i5, right? Er, um, about that. Holy smokes, this game is one of the most scalable and flexible that I have tested. It absolutely will use more performance if you have it, providing both higher frame rates and more importantly, smoother frame rates. But in this case, on a four core, four thread i5 from four years before this game launched, it is shockingly playable. Don't get me wrong, there is still stutter and input lag here, but not much. I would absolutely play this on this PC if I had no other choice. This is a game that I have hundreds of hours in. I have completed the main campaign and started on the expansion. If at all possible, you really want a 6-core 12-thread CPU at the least to get solid performance in heavy combat. But the fact that it's playable at all here is remarkable. Who says Ubisoft can't optimize a game? Valorant is a newer game that also runs well on this hardware. What you're watching is low detail, and while it's not dripping with epic detail, naturally, it does run fast and smooth. I really have little more to add here. The numbers on screen speak for themselves. World of Warships is almost eight years old at this point. My how time flies. However, like so many live service games, it has received many updates and patches over the years. One big upgrade has been the graphics engine. The level of detail continues to grow, and so benchmarks and game footage from even just two years ago is not comparable to the game as it stands today. As one might expect from a free-to-play game that survives on volume and a cash shop, this runs pretty well on older hardware. However, there are some key points to consider. The actual in-game interface in the menus, selecting ships, configuring modules, selecting battles is dreadfully slow on this i5. The game takes a very long time to actually load into the map and updates take a long time. It is 100% playable. However, some patience will be required, so keep that in mind. It is a lot of fun if you're a fan of World War I and World War II naval combat, and it's free to play, mostly. XCOM 2 is another game that I used to live stream heavily back in the old days. I normally play with more than 50 mods installed, however this is the base game without anything extra installed to show the baseline performance. Being a turn-based game, it is absolutely playable on this i5, however again, some patience is required as loading screens and movement can have some delay. If you look at the frame time graph, you'll see a lot of stutters. That doesn't really impact a turn-based game so much as it's just something you have to live with. 
A more modern CPU with more threads would help a lot here. For those of you who made it this far, two gold stars for all of you. Thank you so much for watching all of that. This took several days to benchmark, several more days to script, film, and edit. And to be honest, I spent more time on this than I really should have. However, it was an interesting trip down memory lane and a good reminder that there are plenty of awesome games to play on less than epic hardware. If I may be blunt, the only reason to keep such hardware in service is one of two reasons. First, this could be a really useful secondary PC for a home theater PC, a NAS, or home automation station. There are many uses for a PC besides a daily driver that you sit in front of every day. This could cover many of them. The second reason is for people who simply don't have the budget to replace it. If that's you, fair enough. I understand everyone has their own situation and not all can afford to upgrade for various life reasons. I've been there. I'm not at the moment, but I have been there and so I do understand. If you can afford it, good lord, get on it already. You missed at least one upgrade already, and I know that some people will say, but if it works for me, what do I need more for? That's a fair response. However, my counter would be that we only have a limited time in this life. If money isn't an issue, spending it on a PC that makes you wait for it rather than it wait for you is a poor use of your limited life. The update speeds were slow, game launch times were long, menus had delays, and more. Star Wars Battlefront 2 took over 30 minutes to process the shaders before we could get into our very first battle. That's after the game downloaded and launched. We actually published a member exclusive video showing that entire process. We recorded it, it was ridiculous. We had to leave this PC on for two straight days just to install the games we tested here, and that is with a gigabit internet fiber connection to boot. The limitation was the CPU. Everything just took a very long time. We have very nice SSDs in here, which is why I say that if you can afford better, use some of that money to get a PC that responds to you. A Ryzen 5 5500 can be had for just $85 at the time this video is being recorded. That is a six core, 12 thread Zen 3 CPU that is on average double the performance of this i5. Get a B450 or an inexpensive B550 motherboard, frankly, anything will do. Use the stock cooler this comes with and game on. Or if you want something on a newer platform, the i3-12100F recently was under $70 on sale. Install it on a B660 motherboard, which is not this, but it's the best I can do because it's what I have. Use in the stock cooler and off you go. I have tested this on the stock cooler, works fine. Don't bother spending money on a cooler if you're buying an i3-12100F. It really doesn't cost all that much to double your performance. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Hopefully you all found this interesting or entertaining or informative or perhaps just amusing. Let me know in the comment section below if this CPU or any of these games brought back memories 
or perhaps if you still use it or one like it. Would you like to see more older system tests like this one? And if so, using what combination of hardware, CPU, GPU, etc.? I look forward to reading the comments on this one. I'm sure you all have a lot to say. This is the part of the video where you do the like, the comment, the subscribe, and all those YouTube things. I would remind you that links down in the video description below will take you to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay. Not for the CPU, of course, but the graphics card is awesome. During the edit of this, Newegg actually dropped the price of the RX 6600 down to 179 holy smokes. The other thing is the RX 7600 has launched. We are in the middle of benchmarking that. I know other reviews have come out. It's a little bit faster than a 6600. It's not really worth the price premium, but sure, if it's 30 bucks more, go for it. You'll notice I also put a Ryzen 7 and an i7 CPU here. The more you buy, the longer your computer lasts. Budget is always a thing. I understand that many of you are on a budget. However, instead of an i3, if you buy the i5, which I don't have the retail box for, or the i7, or heavens forbid, the i9, what you end up with is not just a faster computer that can do more things, but a computer that will, in general, last longer. Depends on your situation. The i5 and maybe the i7 are sort of the sweet spot in terms of value for the money, but the i9 has the benefit of being the top of the stack. The Ryzen 7 5700G or the Ryzen 7 5700X are about $170 at the moment. Holy smokes, 8 core, 16 threads, 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz of Zen 3 performance. For under $200, those things are a smoking deal. And if you're looking for something better than the i3, but you don't want to go all top-end expensive $400 R CPU, I cannot scream and shout at how awesome those are. However, once again, as shown in this video, this eight-year-old i5-6500 still plays 18,000 bajillion games, just not as well as it used to. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see all of you next time. Actually, I have that box, don't I? Oh, it was dusty. And then I wiped my hand on my shirt. Look what I prepared earlier. Oh, uh, the benefits of keeping everything. Spider-Man Remastered is a... Re yeah. Part 68, take two. The game takes a very long time to load maps and updates. Updates. To quote Jensen, the more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy the more you save. more you buy, the more you save. You guys know the drill. The more you buy, the more you save. Okay, that's kind of silly, but yeah, there are some elements of truth to it in the sense that yeah, your computer lasts longer. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. He's referring to people making money with their computers. He's not referring to length of time. But man, the i9 and the Ryzen are just so fast. If people have the money, I don't understand why people who can comfortably afford it want to buy mid-grade stuff and then have to go through the trouble of replacing their computer more often unless it's just a hobby. These are just so unbelievably fast. They will last a long time. You don't have to mess with your computer. You don't have to change your computer. You don't have to do anything with your computer for a long, long time. You buy the i5, the Ryzen 5, you're upgrading in two or three years. With these, you might get five years out of it. However, this is the new Trojan horse. The Ryzen 7 7700X has recently been about $280, $290. AM5, upgradable. I'm kind of liking this for somebody who just wants to do a CPU drop and upgrade, which of course Raptor Lake will have no further upgrades to. So that's, that's kind of an interesting option because when Zen 5 comes out, Zen 5 will beat both of these. As impressive as these are, I kind of was surprised at how well some of the games played on this. The Division 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint were perhaps the biggest surprises. Not everything runs properly on this. Assassin's Creed Syndicate was absolutely dog useless. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla would be trash. Jedi Survivor would be a joke. But it's not trash. It is absolutely usable. I'm very happy to see that.